I wanted to figure out what Sydney Sweeney's makeup artist used on her at the Met. And I found out what it was. And we're gonna try to recreate that look together. Of course it looks different because I don't have a brunette wig. I have no interest in putting one on and I'm not in blue. But I just wanna take that singular technique of the glowy face and body, the glitter, and recreate that. So we're gonna do the eye look. The skin look was done in a separate video, which was a deep dive on combination skin. And that was also before we added the glitter. If you wanna see that, I'll have it linked in another video. But if you want to know what Sydney Sweeney's makeup artist used in that look and learn how to recreate it with me, then just keep watching. I feel like celebrities always get the recognition for things that their makeup artists do and things that stylists plan for them. So I found her makeup artist. Um, I'll link her down below. And I found out what she used on the skin and the face to get that look. I don't have the exact same stuff that she used on the face, but I got the stuff that she used on the body. So we're going to try to recreate that and just see where it takes us. So let's just start by priming the eyes. I just wiped off my last eye makeup because we did this skin video. Um, it's like a tutorial on combo skin. If you want to see it, go ahead and go to that video. It should be up before this one. So now let's just prep the eyes. I'm using an hourglass concealer because I want a really strong base for this. Her eyes look really bright. So I'm not gonna use a lot in terms of eyeshadows because my eyes can get overwhelmed really easily and I want everything to be bright with almost like a white base underneath. I think I will grab my LA Colors and just add even more brightness to the lid area. I hope these products work together. I don't know if they will. Um, but the eyes were bright and the liner was dark. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna try to make my lid look a little bigger by bringing this highlight shade up through here. If you bring your highlight shades up, if you have a slightly hooded eye, it can open it up a little bit more. My eyes are almost hooded. I think as I get older, they will one day be fully hooded. So that's usually how it happens. You really lose my eyelid in there. If you have eyes like that, you can just punch up that lid color just a little higher. I feel like celebrity makeup artists do this all the time. If your eye is fully hooded, then instead you're just gonna wanna smoke it. But if you still have some lid show, just bring it up a little. Let's lock it in with a translucent powder because my matte shadows, I don't have a white right now. I need a white. I don't know how I don't have a white. I'm sure I do somewhere, but it's not in this palette or that one or that one or that one. But to get that brightness, that's done with color, not necessarily shimmer. Like you have to brighten it first and then put the shimmer. So now let's go into my Viseart Paris Reveries. Maybe this one. Yeah, let's use this shade out here. And we'll tap that onto the lid as well. There's something about her makeup that looks slightly warm, slightly golden. There was one picture of her lower lash line that I saw and I don't know if it's like banana powder or if there's really like a warm light shadow in her lower lash line. We'll try to do that as well because it seems pretty. And yeah, just stamping this on with the finger. This is one of my favorite Viseart palettes. I think it's surpassing my love for the Milieu palette. However, that is my favorite client palette, so maybe I shouldn't speak too soon. Uh, it just depends on your color palette. So this looks good to me. I'm not gonna do a lot of shading in the crease, probably not any at all. We'll tap a little of this Midnight Glow, um, Midnight, Midnight Sun Pat McGrath shadow. It's kind of like a skin tone glitter, but this glitter, we're gonna come back and use this later. Let's do a strong liner. I'm gonna use Inglot because her liner was so black that it could only be Inglot. I mean, I'm sure it probably was Chanel or something. In my personal collection, that black line could only be Inglot. As I do my liner, I'm gonna tell this story. Once I was working alongside this makeup artist who was sponsored by Chanel, and she was doing this figure skater who was talking about how she was so glad that she, um, she was an Olympian. She was talking about how she was so glad that her Laneige uh, 
collaboration was ending soon and I was like, ooh. And the makeup artist really was only using Chanel. Because sometimes I wonder, like, is it just for show? Is it just for cameras? Do they actually just use the branded thing? Because I've never been sponsored like that as a working makeup artist. Like, because I don't have celebrity clients who are big enough. I have like influencer celebrity clients, which doesn't count. And no brand has ever been like, let me sponsor you, you know? Because I'm not working the Met and stuff. I'm like small time, I'm a small time girl. But she really did use only Chanel. I only saw Chanel there. I think the only non-Chanel things she used were like lash clusters and that's because Chanel doesn't make lash clusters. So interesting tidbit. And it also made me wonder why she was glad that her Laneige campaign was ending. And this was years ago. And I was doing another girl who was an Olympian as well, but this is bad, but I was booked through a third party agency and I don't even know her name. And she was like, I don't want my makeup done. She's like a tomboy. She didn't want her makeup. It's like, I was just, I was being paid to do her makeup. So I did, but I don't think she loved it. Cause she was like the type of girl that like, she was like a hockey player. It's just, she didn't want her makeup done, which is easy for me. It's like a little tinted moisturizer, you know, but okay. Anyway, let's finish up this liner. It's funny because Sydney's liner looks very prominent, but I think she just has those big, huge eyes. Because if you look at the actual line, it doesn't look that thick. I think she just has those beautiful eyes. Slowly building it up. And once you guys get a good idea too, if you're like a beginner at a wing, once you get good at it, you can use any tool. Like I'm using a lip brush. This is probably not ideal, but you just need a brush that can be squished really thin. Even though this is not the right brush technically, it's working great because it can be squished down. It's a ColourPop E29, but I believe it's sold in a set. I was brooding about that eyelash she put on her because I'm like, what is it? It looks to me in some images like a strip and in some images like a full set of clusters. Some images make it look like a mink lash. Some images make it look like an Ardell Wispy or something. I'm gonna grab an Ardell Wispy. So these are the Wispies 113. You know what I just had a flashback of? Do you guys know the Skinny Confidential? When she lived in LA and in my earlier years, like I've been doing makeup for like five years at the time, I was doing her makeup and she's really um, decisive. She's like, I want this, 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 and an Ardell Wispy 113. I came in as her makeup artist not having those lashes so she was click clacking on her phone and I quickly, the first time I went over there, I quickly just Googled what that looks like because I did not have it. And I just found a similar one and she loved her makeup and then she started booking me again, but I'll never forget it. And I want an Ardell 113. Maybe it was actually a different, but it was, I think it was an Ardell 113. It was an Ardell something. It had to have been this because this is the type of lash that she likes. And I still see makeup artists using these lashes on her and she knows exactly what she wants. I really liked working with her actually. She was very nice. Oh, and she was a client. I talk about these clients a lot who say no eyeshadow. So I'd always just do the concealer and set on her. No eyeshadow, eyeliner, full coverage. And I'm pretty sure she didn't like blush either. Whoa, I trimmed this too much, but it does look like Lauren. She has bigger eyes too. She actually has eyes similar to Sydney Sweeney. We would almost do this eye look on Lauren as well, just no eyeshadow. I used to do, um, in my glam squad days too, I used to do Deepika's makeup from Live Tinted and she was a client like that too. All my influencer clients back then, you show up and they're like, I want this, 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 this. Don't use that on me. Don't use that on me. And it's funny because um, my influencer clients, it made me be like, hmm, I want to do this. Because I'd be out doing like seven makeups in a day 
and they'd be like, I'm so busy, but I just see them like click clacking on their phone and I'd be like, I want to be busy click clacking on my phone. And once they're really dry, again, I'm gonna go ahead and pinch. Now, before I put bottom mascara, this is what I forgot to do earlier. I'm gonna push a little of this peach eyeshadow into the lower lash line because I swear when I zoomed in on Sydney, there was something orangey or peachy in her lower lash line. And again, I don't know if it was banana powder to set her under eye. I don't know what it is, but I liked it. And so I'm gonna add that to me. And now I'm gonna add heaps of mascara. I'm liking the Ilia more and more. I discovered that if I use it flat, instead of brush side and then um, the comb side, found that if I just go flat to the lash, upper and lower, it works really, really easily. It builds it up really fast. And um, it gives maybe even more volume, especially on the top lashes. Bottom lashes, it's like not a struggle anyway, but wow, these Ardell Wispies are long. I usually go for shorter and fuller, but I don't, I don't know. That mascara really did it. Mascara on the bottom just frames the eye so well, especially in like a lash heavy look. And now I'm gonna pinch. I just wiped off my lip liner that I already had on and just put a beauty blender over my lips so that I can erase this and redraw it. Sydney's makeup looked, her lip especially looked very pale and it looked like a brown lip liner with a very nude lipstick and gloss. So I'm using this. This is like truly a brown lip pencil. It's the Dibs Definer. It doesn't say here, but it's the lightest one they make. I think it's just called light and just tracing my outer lip line. And I'm sure I'll have to go in with this again, post lipstick because pale lipsticks spread and usually take away some of the effect of the lip liner. And I'm gonna go back to an old favorite. This has been a favorite of mine. This is Mac Myth. This is not the original. Look at that. That is not the original Mac Myth. And I mentioned this or maybe I just showed it on camera and everybody in the comments agreed. This is not what MAC Myth used to be, but when paired with a dark lip liner and like a beat face, it's still pale enough, I guess. I'm still disappointed, but it's a pale lipstick regardless. And then her lip is glossy. This Lawless Rosy Outlook looks like a good lip to pair with it. I'm like barely touching my lip because I don't want to ruin the foot. One of you guys told me to wipe the foot before applying gloss like a while ago and ever since I think of you every single time. I'm gonna do a little more lipstick and bring it a little higher under there. You know, it's just not the girl that I used to know, this lipstick. It's not her, but They've taken away all my other pale nudes. They've changed this one. There's nothing I can do. Now you guys, it's time for the fun part. The makeup artist, which I can't remember her name, but I'll, like I said, I'll tag her. She like puffed loose glitter onto the face before spraying the chest with this and then a little of this on the face. This is the Eva NYC Queen Silver Glitter Spray. I am going to use a pressed glitter on my face first because I don't have a little glitter in a puff thing. And I'm going to make good use of my Pat McGrath product. This clean brush, and this is like a nude shade of glitter. And I'm gonna pop this all over my face. Mostly around the cheek and stuff, but I'm gonna put it everywhere. And this is giving that effect, so I'm pleased. Also, when it comes to body, I think Sydney probably had a body full of foundation on before she sprayed her down with this. So I'm gonna put some body makeup here first. This is nice and easy. You might have seen me in an ad for this. 
Because whenever they sent this to me, I was like, I like it. And they reached out. And I like it when partnerships come that way. Because, I don't know. Because it's just more authentic that way. And it's also more rare for me. Like, I'm a small, I'm still small time. I get weird ad requests every day. And it's just like, you say no to many, many, many more things than you can ever say yes to in content creation. Because people like email me about like a toilet sponge. Like, wow. You thought of me to sell your toilet sponge? Not a compliment. <laughs> oh wow, body looks, <laughs> looks really nice. So now let's go in with the Eva NYC. Oh my God, that's pretty. It is a, a glitter spray, holy. I don't wanna get in my hair. Oh my frick, this is pretty. Oh my God, this is nice. These makeup artists, they really know what they're doing. Influencers know something too. And I feel like I'm kind of caught between the worlds, but makeup artists, like these people who are working with talent, they know, like those are the people to really listen to their advice. Now I'm gonna spritz it a little on the cheeks. <laughs> I don't wanna do too much on the face. That's probably enough. Oh my God, look at the glitter. Oh my God, this is beautiful. Oh my God, let me turn a couple lights down. I don't know if it's still doing it justice. Like this in person is very beautiful. Oh my gosh, I don't have anywhere to go. I'm just gonna shower this off and it's kind of sad. This is actually so pretty and I wasn't sure if it would be. The thing that's weird about it though, is that, you know the texture of like cracked paint? It feels a little bit like cracked paint. Like it's a little bit, whoa. It doesn't transfer. It's like sealed, holy shit. It's like sealed under into the formula like it's not everywhere it's not like transferring which to me is insane that's insane no in real life i look like i just came off the set of twilight like holy shit um that's it for our look i'm gonna take some pictures of this because i don't know what the longevity is like but i cannot believe that it's not coming off like yeah a couple flecks of glitter but like Usually when you do a body glitter like this, it would really come off. Let's take the hair out too and kind of do a little finished moment. It wouldn't have killed me to do my hair today, but also, it, but it would have ki killed my hair actually. Wow. I, I am loving it. I'm looking at myself and I usually don't feel this way. Okay, you guys, so this is it for our look. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. Put the hair back. Let me know if you try this. I fully recommend this spray after trying this. I'm gonna do this on the next one because this is just next level. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below and I will see you for the next one.